we are hearing Bhagavad Gita. Yesterday we were hearing how Krishna is everywhere and how everything is He, but at the same time He is not everywhere and not everything is He. Means He is describing the Achintya Veda, Veda Tattva, which is incomprehensible to human reasoning, mind, all this. You have to realize it. What he is telling is true, but how it is, it is possible only to understand true realization. Yes, just as air is all pervading, expansive and ever existing in ether, but the ether is separate from it. So all beings exist in me, but I do not exist in them. Know this as true. Then today. Sarva Bhutani Kaunteya Prakriti Myanti Mamikam Kalpakshaye Punastani Kalpadau Visri Jamyaham O son of Kunti, all living beings enter into my Prakriti at the end of the world's age and again when a new Kalpa begins I send them forth into this world through the agency of my mic potency. This we heard when Brahma sleeps, they will go there unmanifest. And then again, when new day will come, new Kalpa, then again they will continue their karma. But when there is end of life of Brahma, life of Brahma is one Mahakalpa, at that time even Brahma is destroyed and totally everything is destroyed and that time Jivas will all enter into Mahavishnu. They will sleep there. And then again when Vishnu will breathe out, then again innumerable universes will come out and again jivas will be infused there and they will still they will they will continue from where they left in the previous creation so karma is not destroyed by time or by this destruction of material uh, forms and all this that information is still there. It is only going into sleeping mode. Then it will be awakened with new creation. Prakritim sam avastabhya visrija me punah puna Bhuta gramam imam kritsnam avasham prakriter vashat. This material universe is subject to my maik creative principle. This multitude of living beings being dependent on and goaded by my prakriti comes into existence time and again by my creative principle at my own free will, I being the absolute. Nachamamtani karmani nibandnanti dhananjaya udasinvat asinam asaktam teshu karmasu O dhananjaya those actions are not binding on me who am entirely detached from those actions and am indifferent to them like an unconcerned witness. Explanation. 
but O Dhananjay, these actions are not binding on me. I am entirely detached from and nonchalant to them. But I am always attached to transcendental bliss accruing from the divine sports in my blissful abode. The two manifested worlds, with the Jiva world and the universe, emanate from my two potencies, with the intermediate Jiva potency and the external Maik potency, which indirectly enliven or support my eternal bliss. My real self is not in any way affected by these two potencies or their actions. What those beings and elements are doing under the influence of my Maya serve indirectly to give color and beauty to my divine rebels in the blissful realm. Rebels means lilas. Like an unconcerned witness, I always stand aloof from and am never involved in my affairs. This we hear during Kartik Brata when we are hearing Gajendra Moksha. There Gajendra, a uh, few times he says that Supreme Lord is indifferently watching everything. Then Gurudev is explaining that sometimes there is earthquake in Gujarat it happened. So at that time 300,000 people died very quickly. And we complain, is God not seeing anything? Why he is allowing these things to happen? This way. But Guru said God is seeing everything. But he is indifferently watching how this is possible for him because he knows that it is nothing directly happening to the jivas. Like when you are dreaming, someone is cutting your hand in a dream, but that is not true. You will, you will suffer in the dream, but there is no actual damage to yourself. Once you will wake up, you will see it was all false. But still you were getting that suffering. So jivas, they are getting suffering because they are absorbed in material energy and they are thinking I am born, I am dying, I am this only. But no actual harm to jiva. So Krishna can easily observe this because he knows this. No harm is there, actual. And what I can do? If they would turn to me, I can remove this Maya, but because they are averse to me, they want to enjoy this Maya, they have to undergo these things and they are reaping the fruits of their own actions, so it is going on. And since they are not taking my shelter, what I can do? I am waiting, but those who will take shelter, immediately I will remove this Maya and they will realize everything was false. So, uh, not in the sense that it was not existing, but it is non-eternal and how we perceive it, it is wrong, that I am this and I am suffering all this. This will realize, so he can indifferently watch. That does not mean that he is not compassionate. We think compassion means, our compassion comes from my illusion that thing that we think compassion for some bodily interest we think if if we help that is real compassion and if krishna is seeing like this indifferent then he has no compassion it is not true he has real compassion that is our sentimental compassion and also temporary and it will not solve the problem actually for once and for all. Krishna has real compassion. He himself as Paramatma is inspiring Jivas to turn to him. He appears personally in this world to attract us and he sends his own personal associates to motivate us to serve him. That is real compassion. But those who don't want, then they are rotating in Maya 
and he is seeing indifferently, not concerned, and he is doing his blissful pastimes in Golo Brindavan. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explained that this Shrishti Lila, this creation Lila is also one of the innumerable Lilas of Supreme Lord because he is unlimited. There are unlimited Lilas, so this is one of them. And so that he can also, once one lady asked me, how God is all good if we can see so much suffering in this world? I said, because of this, He's all good. And she could not understand. I said, because the goodness must be of unlimited varieties. So God makes these jivas, which are like children, they're liable to be entangled by Maya if they misuse their relative independence. Like one mother, she, is, she says to child, don't touch that hot stove, you will get burned. That is wrong action. Like that, we are inspired by Sarup Shakti to serve Krishna, but we wanted to enjoy. So how this advice of Supreme Lord to not do this and do this, this type of goodness would could exist if such arrangement would not be there. So this is one goodness of one variety to teach small children what is good, what is not good. And another thing is when children, they do wrong things, then another goodness comes, Supreme Lord will rescue them. That is also another goodness. So if this material creation would not exist, such goodness could not exist in Supreme Lord. And he could not be all good all in the sense of all variety good. So, this is also there as one Lila, and this, this is his compassion. Not sentimental compassion, but real compassion. Maya Dyakshena Prakriti Suyate Sachara Charam Hetuna Nena Kaunteya Jagadvi Parivartate O son of Kunti, my Prakriti brings forth all things movable and immovable in this world under my supervision. It is for this reason that this world comes into existence explanation, my predominance over all the actions of Prakriti is palpable when she brings forth these sentient and insentient words, completely guided by my glance, and they come into existence as the perverted reflections of my eternal blissful realm. I will see this word. of a feeling or, or atmosphere so intense as to seem almost tangible, plain to see or comprehend, able to be touched or felt. Yes, it is seen. His predominance, Krishna's predominance, it is seen when he inspires that Prakriti to do all these things. That is guided by his glance, Mahabishnu, he glances there. First, the so innumerable universes come out from his pores and then by his glance he imparts jivas. 
into the world. So then everything is moving under his supervision and under his power, not independently. That is why that Big Bang theory or so many things about creations, all speculations. And Buddhists, they will say there was no any beginning to any creation and there is no end. It is always going transformation going on, but it is also not true. There is the creator, Supreme Lord, who is making all this perpetually in cycles under his supervision and under his power. Here Krishna is telling this. Sentient means jiva, sentient, sentient means material elements. And when they combine, then this is all moving here. But without Krishna's will, nothing can happen. Avajananti mamuda manushimtanum ashritam param bhavam ajananto mama bhuta maheshwaram. Foolish persons disparage me as I manifest myself in a human form, not knowing that I am the supreme spiritual personality and the supreme lord of the universe. Explanation. The sum and substance of my saying is that my eternal form is Satchit Ananda, being intelligence, bliss. Our Param Gurudev, he used to say, and Gurudev, all, all existence, all knowledge, all bliss, Satchit Ananda. Here it is being, means existence, intelligence, that is awareness or this consciousness, and bliss. My potencies act under my grace, but I am independent of those actions. I condescend myself to appear to mundane view out of my causeless grace through my harmonizing potency yoga maya. I am above physical nature and her laws. I am omnipotent and self-effulgent. I reveal myself when I will. So when he appears, Krishna appears in this world, that is not the same as conditioned souls they have to undergo birth under the results of their previous actions. And they are also under the laws of this nature, but Krishna is not when he comes. There are so many examples in Shastra about this. You heard how Jashoda was trying to bind and so many there. Even his personal associates like Pralad. Krishna protected him. According to physical laws, he would be killed if he was thrown by such force by his father to the ground on the stone. He would die. And so, in so many ways, they tried to kill with sword, with spears, with everything, but they could not do anything because those physical laws were changed in this case. They were not working. Krishna made them and he can change also. Not all can accept this, can understand this, but this is possible. We think it is like this, as it is, but Krishna can change anything. So, Krishna appears in this world by Yoga Maya, but he is, as here in the verse, it is very nicely translated. I am supreme spiritual personality. Generally, Mayavadis, they say personality means it, it is connected to matter. What is spiritual is impersonal. Matter, we have personality and form like this. 
but this is only perverted reflection of transcendental spiritual personality and form that is eternal. So spiritual personality, if there is no personality in the cause, there can be no personality in the effect. Nothing cannot be the cause of something. Something is the cause of something. The ascription of infinitesimality, finitude or failability to me, is due to the crippled senses of my ridden souls. They think, those who are foolish, they think Krishna is like us. He's making mistakes. He's limited. He's small. All this. So they are trying to ascribe this to him. But that is only wrong perception through their material senses. Those conditioned souls. They make this mistake. They are quite ignorant of my supreme personality. My super excellent beautiful form is transcendental, eternally adolescent, and of medium stature. Hearing this word, we get old. Our body gets old. We cannot stop that. But Krishna He's always young. And according to his Lila, he may have different ages. But for that Lila, it is always like that. That is not under the pressure of any time. Here we cannot stop the time. But there everything is eternal. Krishna can play the pastime of being 16 years old, always. And he can, in front of Jashoda, he can play pastime of being old five years like this. Simultaneously, he can do. Or he may also be older than 16 in some other avatars or as Mahaprabhu, like this. So, but that is all eternal, only Lila, not under the pressure of time. And medium stature, looks like medium, but it is not a medium. It is unlimited. Appears medium. I reveal myself through my inconceivable cheat potency, Yoga Maya. Fools suppose this eternal, beautiful, adolescent human form of mind to be mortal, subject to the influence of Maya, but they do not know that I am the Supreme Lord of all macrocosm and microcosm. Microcosm. Hence, deluded by their deceptive empiric knowledge, based on sense experience and intelligence in mind, they impute a wrong and superficial view to my beautiful eternal human figure, whom my devotees, endowed with pure intelligence, behold as the embodied personality of the principles of Satchit and Ananda. Fools misinterpret, misunderstand, misconceive, and disparage my transcendental personality, whom they mistake for a mundane human form and even go to the length of deriding me. Examples are witness Shishupal, Kangsa, and others. And Hiranyakashipu also, and uh, Hiranyaksha, Ravan, all they are doing. Not knowing my supreme spiritual personality and that I am beyond the limits of time and space. 
Otherwise, if they would know the truth, they, truth, they would never fight against him. Mogha Shamogha Karmano Mogha Gyana Vicheta Saha Rakshasim Asurim Chaiva Prakriti Mohinim Shritaha. They traduce me under the influence of demoniac, fiendish, and delusive temperament as they are men of vain hopes, vain enjoyments of heavenly pleasure, who are deluded by the untenable theory of impersonal Brahman, and whose intelligence is enshrouded by the three qualities of Maya. I will check these words here. Traduce. Reduce. Speak badly of or tell lies about someone so as to damage their reputation. That is, traduce. So they traduce me, Krishna, under the influence of demoniac and now fiendish. Fiendish, extremely cruel or unpleasant. So, demoniac, fiendish, and delusive temperament. Delusive. giving a false or misleading impression, deceptive. As they are men of vain hopes, vain enjoyments of heavenly pleasure, who are deluded by the untenable theory of impersonal Brahman and whose intelligence is enshrouded by the three qualities of Maya. explanation it may be asked whence is this false imputation imputation a charge or claim that someone has done something undesirable an accusation the action of or process of ascribing righteousness, guilt, etc., to someone by virtue of a similar quality in another. So some accusation. So it may be asked, whence is this false imputation or accusation? Then listen to me. Fiendish in nature, demon-like in temperament, deceitful and of ignoble ignoble mind not honorable in character or purpose ignoble mind all hopes actions and knowledge of the wicked prove abortive and come to naught their attention is diverted into vain hopes of enjoying celestial pleasure as the fruit of virtuous deeds. They are debarred from acquiring pure knowledge due to their abject selfish action. Of, 
uh, of something bad experienced or present to the maximum degree. Extremely unpleasant and degrading. Hmm. They are debarred from acquiring pure knowledge due to their abject selfish action. Means uh, maximum degree. Extremely unpleasant and degrading. If they at all seek after any knowledge, their intelligence is enshrouded by the wicked and untenable theory of impersonal Brahman. They think, out of illusion, that my eternal Satchit Ananda Shama Sundar Forum is Maik and hence inferior to Brahman notwithstanding my Ishwar Hood. Vain hopes of heavenly enjoyments and dry wisdom of abstract Brahman are the respective goals of their worship. Although purification of heart is aimed at, in the beginning, taking to my worship as means, their ultimate end is perfect absorption in impersonal Brahman, with the result that the divine nature of their real self is completely enwrapped by their fiendish and demoniac temperament. So two types, those who are trying to enjoy this material world and heavenly planets. They are bewildered by that enjoying spirit. They are unable to recognize Krishna as he is. And they are, there are impersonalists. They also cannot because they think Brahman is superior, that impersonal. They think this is my Krishna, everything is new. For process it is okay for getting concentration, but ultimately not. We heard about this many times. Gurudev told when they were there in Ambala camp in Lakshmi Narayan temple, and then one Mayavadi came, white cloth Mayavadi. And when Param Gurudev and Gurudev they offered obeisances to Lakshmi Narayan, he was standing there. He was not going down. He said, why I will bow down? I am God. Why I will bow down? And then they did Parikrama Gurudev Prangur, but he did not do. Because he thought, I am already above this. This is for some purification of heart in the beginning. That is okay. Or that lady said, this is okay for practice beginning, but ultimately that is not there. So they are having such temperament and uh, Indra, there is example because here it is mentioned. Uh, about enjoying heavenly pleasure. So one time, Indra was speaking with his wife with great attachment. At that time, Brihaspati Guru came and he did not stand up to receive him because of that conversation with attachment. And Brihaspati thought he did not see him, so he came closer, but still Indra would not bow down to him or stand up to receive him. Then Brihaspati saw, oh, fallen, fallen, they are fallen. So Gurudev said, Guru also has to abandon his disciple if he sees that he is not uh, surrendered. 
So that time Brihas Pati left heaven, abandoned them all. Then Indra became afraid. Who will help us in fighting with the demons? We got strength from him and advises, but now who will? That was his for the fighting of demons. And then he went to Brahma and told him, this is what happened. Brihaspati left. Then Brahma said, yes, there is another one. Uh, son of Trashtamuni. That is, it is there in Bhagavatam. And today I was hearing from Gurudev. That is why I'm remembering. That his son, although he is young in age, but he's very qualified by his practice and everything. So you can take him as guru. You will get strength. But you should know one thing, that he is in favor of demigods, but also he has some weakness of affection for demons less but so you should not be disturbed you will not be uh, harmed by that you don't mind that so then indra went to that son of trashtamuni and they they requested him for mantra he first refused no you are my superior in age and everything but they were forcing no brahma said then he said okay if brahma said then i i must give so they became his disciples and then one year passed and one demigod saw when the son i Vishwarup, his name was yes Vishwarup. he was doing yagya yes after they got mantra from that Vishwarup. Then Indra and all demigods, they became very powerful and they could easily govern everything and do this all. So they were very happy getting that power because he was doing that yagya and tapas and everything. So one day, one demigod was there and he saw that very loudly that Vishwarup was doing yagya in favor of demigods uttering their names and offering it to fire like this but at the end he also offered in more silent voice less uh, intense to some demons or some names he offered because that was his weakness in nature brahma already told him but he said you will not be harmed by that you should not mind but indra forgot that point of Brahma. And he became very angry <laughs> and he killed that Guru. But I said, this is also possible due to some selfish desire. One may kill his Guru also, but Indra got heavy reaction because of that. Then later that story of Vritasur comes. So if this enjoying spirit is there, then you cannot recognize Supreme Lord. Even you cannot recognize the Guru, well-wishing of Guru. And you, you do, you are ready to do anything for that selfish purpose. So two types, one is Bhogi, he cannot understand Krishna. Enjoyer. One is a renouncer, impersonalist. He also cannot understand Supreme Lord. Only devotee can understand by Krishna's grace. So here Krishna is saying they have fiendish and demoniac temperament. Aversion to Krishna. Mahatmanas to Mampartha, Devim Prakritim Ashritaha, Bajanti Ananyamanaso, Gyatva Butadim Avyayam. 
Oparta, but the high souled saints. High souled, you see, Mahatma. High souled saints endowed with pure intelligence worship me as the primeval and unchangeable source of all beings with single minded devotion under the guidance of their unsullied temperament. Means pure. Hmm. Explanation. O Partha, those who are blessed with pure intelligence are known as Mahatma. High souled saints. No doubt. It's very nice. High souled saint Mahatma. Naturally of devotional aptitude, they worship me as the primeval, eternal and unchangeable source of all beings, movable and immovable, with single-minded devotion, regardless of the transient fruits of all actions, and completely indifferent to the self-destructive, abstract knowledge of impersonal Brahman. Here, there are two explanations seen in this verse uh, Mahatmanas Tuman Partha Devim Prakritim Ashritaha in uh, seventh chapter we heard Krishna told I have one Apara Prakriti means material energy and besides that there is Para Prakriti they are jivas. So here, Devim Prakritim Ashritah, some Acharjas, they explain this as internal potency, Devi Prakriti, the third one, and these Mahatmas, they are, ashrit, they are in the shelter of this Surup Shakti, and they are Bhajanti Ananya Manasa. They are worshipping Krishna with one pointed mind, single mind, Ananya Manasa. No other thought is there, no deviation. Gyata Bhutadi Mavya. They can know me. This is one possible explanation. Devim Prakriti Mashritavi. They are in the shelter of Suru Shakti, internal potency, Radharani. Or another is as this Maharaj here explained uh, some charge I think Sai Maharaj also he translated in this way under the guidance of their unsullied temperament means when Jiva is pure uh, purified that nature as we heard Causeless devotion to Supreme Lord is the nature of Jiva in pure state, like magnet and iron. Iron is attracted to Krishna naturally, that is his nature. But if there is some rust, then we don't see this nature. So like that, they, Mahatmas, they are always in their real temperament, pure temperament, that can be said Devi Prakriti, divine nature of Sharanagati and devotion to Krishna. Or it can be said they are under the shelter of Saru Shakti, which actually ultimately means one and the same thing. Because our divine temperament, divine nature cannot be manifested, revealed without taking shelter and getting grace of internal potency and once one is connected then that is manifested so if he's following this natural devotion to krishna that is his divine nature divine temperament the same ultimately same meaning comes because one cannot go without the other hmm.
satatam kirtayanto mam yatantascha dridhabrataha namashyantascha mam bhaktya nityayukta upasate determined and firm in their vow engaging all their activities to my service having recourse to incessant chanting of my holy name and submitting themselves wholly to me with all humility and sincerity, they worship me always in touch with my lotus feet. Explanation. Those great souls endowed with pure intelligence worship me with a loving heart by having having recourse to the ninefold methods of devotion such as hearing chanting incessantly meditating on my holy name forum qualities glorious deeds and sports in my blissful kingdom their only ambition is to attain the eternal service of my beautiful shama sundar forum in my blissful abode Determined and firm in vow, they engage all their activities, physical, mental, social and spiritual, to the gratification of my spiritual senses. They always submit themselves to me with all humility and sincerity, so that their minds may not be alienated from me during their sojourn in this world. Just as the poor dance attendance upon the rich to maintain themselves, so also my devotees associate with the saints for learning the devotional practices of hearing, chanting, meditation, etc. They are always strict in their observance of their vows and they incessantly sing my glorious deeds in order to attain my eternal loving service in the blissful realm. So like those who are poor, they are always trying to be pleasing to those who are rich because that will help them get their favor and they can maintain themselves so they're always attending to them dance attendance but devotees they also like Bhakti Thakur said in that song uh, I am like your dog and whenever you will call me dancing I will come to you very happy. So they are also attending to Krishna, always they want to serve him. And they also associate with saints, because saints, they are very rich in devotion. So if I associate with them, then that will be beneficial for me. I can get from them, I can learn from them. That is why also here in the end, in Britasur's prayers, Totally last prayer, Vritasur said, that I have only one request. I am not so qualified that you will come to me. So it is my request that as long as I am in this world, according to my past karma, let me have friendship with your devotees. I want association of your devotees. That is my only request. Because in association devotees, you will get devotion to Supreme Lord and knowledge how to do it everything. So those who uh, are in such association and practice, they are always strict in observance of their vows and they incessantly sing my glorious deeds in order to attain my eternal loving service in the blissful realm. Tomorrow we'll hear further 
Let me just check there. 